I bet you've never seen a cobbler with those ingredients. Ha, bet you haven't. But you're in luck today because what are we doing? Making a banana split cobbler, the perfect summertime recipe. Hey, thank y'all for stopping by camp and let me just say happy Independence Day to you all. And when we talk about celebrating there, you know, everybody gets at the park or at the lake or at the 4th of July, you know, you be cooking a lot of stuff on the grill. But you know what I look forward to more than anything else? Dessert time. Well, folks, this is a great idea that I've had and I have fed it to cowboys for years. When you can go in on the first night on a ranch, pack that ice cream in some dry ice and just have all this ready to go, it is a great deal, it is. You know, cobblers is something I've probably made nearly as many of as biscuits because on ranches, I made a lot of cobblers. Uh, and this is what we call a quick and easy cobbler because it's just so simple, but it, it's all put together where you pour the batter in and it rises over the top of all the fruit. It's really an easy thing to cook in a Dutch oven if you want to cook one. So we're going to start out with what? Two cups of all-purpose flour. And then we're going to add two cups of sugar. A little cinnamon. And if you would like, you can put some nutmeg in there, but I ain't going to today. Some bacon powder. Bacon? Bacon. B-A-C-O-N. Bacon powder. Yeah. <laughs> So it really takes four teaspoons. So we're gonna call it that I much. I really don't know how accurate that was. That was on the money right there. I mean, it was good as gold. We put salt, we put flour, we put sugar. Do we put salt? put salt? We're that? gonna put some salt in it. I don't think we did. That is the correct amount. Yes, it is. Take your whisk and look at these whisks. Mesquite turned handle, got our brand on them. Hey, these are coming to you in a website here pretty quick they are. These will be a tool you want to match up with your mesquite spatula. Get all your dry mixed together, and to that, two cups of cow juice. Now, if you ain't got no cow, okay, in your backyard that you can just throw the rope around, tie them up to a pole, put the hobbles on the back feet. You know what the hobbles are for, right? They were hook deals. They hooked right on the, the bones back here behind the hocks. Keep a cow from kicking the bucket over while you was milking. If you ain't got that, go to the store. I'll wait on you hurry okay two cups of it it is so this is pretty easy two cups two cups two cups yes it is you can't forget it two cups of whis whiskey no i mean some vanilla well hang on oh. i think this one is the whiskey and this one is the vanilla but you couldn't go wrong with both of them so <laughs> Leave them both laying out there just in case. We'll leave the whiskey out today. So we're gonna add a little vanilla, and that is Mexican vanilla. I really like the flavor that it brings to this. Give it one more stir. If you're cooking this in the house, preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Now beforehand, I took this 12 inch oven, sprayed it with some of that butter spray, and then put me a stick of butter in there to melt. You can see we're cooking in a 12 deep today because when this cobbler rises up, if you was in a shallow 12, you're like this far from the lid and you're more apt to burn that. I always like to cook these in a deep oven. It gives you more room from heat to the top of the cobblers. We're going to dump the batter right in the bottom. What? We're going to let culinary have these dishes. Yes. Y'all, y'all need to clean this out for me. Okay. Culinary. Here we go. Everybody get up in there and get them some of that. Big says, hey, wait a minute. That's a, it's not a big enough bowl. All right, now for the fruit in this, if you ain't got some peach trees, oh, hey, we can show them our peach tree on the way out. Does it have any? Yeah, it's got five little ones, okay? Does it really? Yeah. See that little deal right there where it says packed in light syrup? That's the kind I really like to get the best. And there is a discrepancy in our household as to how much juice you should drain off these peaches to make this. Now, Shan has made a lot of them herself. Me, I like my cobbler to be pretty juicy. She likes hers to be a little cakey. So we're just gonna drain about half of this, which is about that much. Do not do this in the kitchen floor. I need you to scatter it all the way around. Just keep running it around there fresh strawberries they are and then I just want you to slice them 
Now, if you're using fresh peaches, you're gonna to need to cook them down and sweeten them a little. Do not put any of this other fruit in there. It will boil plum away. We done sliced this up a heaping cup of strawberries and two bananas. When I put these in there, I like to scatter them around just like everybody else was to start off with. Intermingle your fruit through there. And if you get to thinking that you need some more fruit in this, get you an apricot. Anything you want to put in it will be fine with me except watermelon. Watermelon cobbler does not work. I have tried that before. Have you really? Yes, on a ranch, trying to see if something would happen. It just boils all away. Now I can remember the first time that I ever cooked this cobbler was in the Paladera Canyon. And we went in and last April, and it, that first night it sleeted on us. It was cold. Uh, in four more days, it was 104. You never know what kind of weather you're gonna get, so I'm thinking it'd be a good time to give them cowboys a treat, it would. So we're gonna make this. Well, I didn't have no ice cream because we didn't bring it in that time. So I had me some heavy whipping cream, so I got me a whisk and I beat that stuff. Got it to where it thickened up just a little. Went ahead and added my vanilla and everything that he's gonna put. Put an egg in there, mixed that up. Shook it really well. Put it in a fruit jar. And I could just shaking and shaking and shaking. And then I'd put it over there in what? The ice chest. I'd get it out. I'd shake it some more. Put it back in there. When I pulled that out of that ice chest that night and told them, I said, folks, we're having banana split cobbler with half melted ice cream. <laughs> and they just poured it right over the top. But we have all of our fruit in there that's going to go at this time. So really what we need to do now is just cook it. I will meet you over at the trivet by the fire. Took us a tall trivet, laid it out there on pretty level ground. Went ahead and placed that Dutch oven on there and just using some good hardwood lump charcoal. Got a little mesquite mixed in with it because really I love the way the mesquite really not only to grill with, but is really good for Dutch oven cooking because it usually makes a big old lumpy coal that's going to last a long time. Loaded the bottom up around there pretty heavy, not right under it, but pretty close to the edge of the Dutch oven and then a good layer on top. And I don't know where you're living if uh, it is like this, but the humidity is very oppressive. It's 89% this morning when we got up. That will sort of suppress fire a little bit today, but be sure that you check it often. And I mentioned rotation, and when I'm doing that, I'm not talking about you, I'm doing all this here. No, I'm talking about taking the top of that Dutch oven lid, spinning it halfway around one direction. Now take the bale and lift it up, do the other one the opposite direction, half around. What does that do? Well, it evens out any hot spot that you might have while you're cooking in a Dutch oven if you had more coals on one side or the other. I've done a lot of Dutch oven cooking in the last 35, nearly 40 years, and I'm sure y'all are too, and there's some of you that's just even starting out. But y'all might have a question too. If it arises, comment down there below and we'll try to answer your question about Dutch oven cooking in a future video. I'm gonna give you a little tip here when we're cooking cobblers like this. Take that lid off. You can see we're beginning to brown right there around the outside edge a little. This is what I call the jiggle wiggle boot heel method. It's scientifically named, I have patented it. Give it a little kick. See how things is setting up? That bottom is what I'd call done. So we're gonna pull this off. It'll usually happen, the bottom will always get done on these first. Well, we did the jiggle boot heel method one more time and you could see there was quite a bit of liquid right dead center in that Dutch oven. So I found me a good hearty big coal and I just placed it right in the center of that trivet, right underneath dead center. Then set the Dutch oven back on there, pulled them coals that's on the lid to the center of the lid and we're gonna target that heat. Remember too, because that outside edge of that on the bottom is done, be sure and pull them coals a little ways away from that.
So we've been on about five minutes we have. We have complete browning on the top as what I would like it to be. So now is the correct time to add the chocolate to the banana split. And we're gonna put that lid back on there when we get them all going. I'm gonna let that chocolate melt just a little. Well, ain't that a beautiful creation? It is a banana split cobbler. Now you seen me over there checking that heat on that Dutch oven. Put your hand down there, about a hand width away from it, sort of like so. If you ain't feeling a lot of heat on there, you need to change some coals out. This is your thermostat right here. If it's most of the time like that, you'll know you're hot enough to cook. But you see me right there after we targeted that heat, take a knife and just poke down in there to get some of that batter to come right on up through the top. When you poke that knife in there, what you're doing is letting that batter come to the top. It's gonna let it cook better even throughout. So when that cobbler's done, bring it over, let it set. It's gotta set, I like to let them set about 15 minutes, maybe 20. Let everything just sort of run back in there together. Everything thickens up and then folks, Break out that Niller ice cream, oh my gosh, and don't forget them Marciano cherries. Now, Shan put some cherries on there, but folks, I like to take a little of this Marciano cherry juice and just dribble over the top of mine. I'm gonna get me some ice cream, some batter, chocolate chip, cherry. It's a lot to put That on is a lot. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Woo, woo. Ice cream shuffle. Woo, woo. Woo. Well, from our camp and our pups to you, we wish you the safest and happiest Independence Day that there is. I hope that everybody joins around you wherever you're at, and y'all have foost. Y'all have foost. Y'all have food and festivities you do. But it is with great pride and honor that I tip my hat to all our service men and women and all the veterans who have kept that old flag a flying up there. It's not just for Independence Day, it's every day. Now, the rest of you, I wasn't even gonna give you this recipe because it's something that I think maybe so a lot of you are gonna tell me, you ruined my 4th of July, I was so full I couldn't even watch the fireworks out there. Come on in here close, come on. I'm gonna give you a great big old hug God bless you each and every one, and I'll see you down the banana split cobbler trail. Y'all get up, it's time to go to work. Come on. There we go. You gotta be poofing me. I mean, chuck wagon is stocked to go down the trail. I guess the first stop the trail boss is gonna make, maybe at the grocery store, I don't know. There it is. And there are not even any weevils in the flower can. Or mice. Or mice. You know, a lot of places where you go and you cook, they have folks that have this laid out for you. But look at all my culinary help here. It's, it's, they're just laid out. That's culinary help. This is culinary cleaning. Good job. God bless you each and every one, and I'll see you down the banana split trail copper. That wasn't right. <laughs>